If you are an avid follower of Xiaomi's Redmi Note series, you probably know that the Redmi Note 9S is a new moniker that threads the needle between the Redmi Note 9 and the Redmi Note 9 Pro. And while the company still offers the cheapest device at the same price point as the Redmi Note 7 from a year ago, it seems like the Redmi Note 9S is the one to get this year. This is Renzo from Manila Shaker and this is our Redmi Note 9S review. Like the previous Redmi Note phones, the Redmi Note 9S still has that glass and glass body. And with the presence of Gorilla Glass 5 on both sides, you can expect micro scratches to be minimal. However, I noticed that the glass on the back feels more like plastic hiding in a glass finish. But regardless, the interstellar grey color that mostly looks like blue feels like above its price tag. The device is also available in tropical green but I think glacier white is also a looker. All three of course come with splash resistance. Aside from the color, the icon-like quad cameras have a significant hub. While you can easily flatten out the added depth with the included jelly case, the module is actually wide enough to prevent intense wobbles. As we move to the plastic frame, you'll notice that the IR blaster is still here. Down at the bottom, you still have room for the headphone jack, USB-C port, and the mono speaker. On the left side, the dual SIM tray is joined by a dedicated micro SD slot. On the right side, you have the very fast and accurate fingerprint scanner doubling as a power button. Right on top of it is the volume rocker that's uncomfortably too high to reach with one hand. However, I did find it very handy when using the device in landscape mode. For the first few days, the Redmi Note 9S felt like a giant phone in my hands, and since it has a wider footprint than the Realme 5i, one-hand navigation was a task. Using the included case gave me the confidence when operating the device, but after a few days, strangely enough, I can comfortably use the device even without the case. Overall, I think the Redmi Note 9S has one of the best design at its price point. If you're in it for the looks, you need to see this phone for yourself. Xiaomi has never cut in display quality even with its aggressive pricing. With the Redmi Note 9S, that continues to be true. It's been a while since I've used an IPS LCD phone for an extended period, and to my surprise, I never had any complaints with this Full HD Plus panel. I like how HDR playback is enabled thanks to the high peak brightness, and I'm also glad to report that there's no screen bleeding with the new unit I'm using. At 6.67 inches, there's plenty of room to navigate around social media feeds, but I mostly appreciate the extended form when playing games. Was the pinhole camera distracting? Not at all. Were there any dimming issues? Yes, particularly around the camera cutout and the four corners of the screen. However, it's like a notch. It goes away after a few days of usage. And from the few times that I had to go out, I never had a problem with the display being too dark under direct sunlight. Do I wish it was brighter? Yes, but at this price point, you just can't complain. Now for the cameras. If you're coming from the Redmi Note 8, there's no upgrade in the sensor and lenses. You still get the same 48 megapixel Sony sensor alongside 8 megapixel ultra wide, 5 megapixel macro, and 2 megapixel depth lenses. As for their photo quality, you get what you pay for. As usual, the 48 megapixel outputs the best photo and video quality. Photos don't look over sharpened and the colors are a bit contrasty even with the natural color reproduction. There are times when the pixel beam photos look soft, even with great lighting, and the autofocus tends to be inconsistent. At times, it would take me at least 3 shots to nail down the focus, but every time it happened, I just switched to 48 megapixel mode and that would fix the issue. There's no optical zoom here, so the best telephoto shots that you can get is from the 2x digital zoom. But even with the noisy output, I applaud the consistency of white balance. As for ultrawide, it may be the inferior lens out of the four, but it's very reliable especially if you want the most stable video footage out of this phone. Unfortunately, the lens is capped at 1080p at 30fps. You can record up to 4K at 30, but you'd need to use the main sensor. There's no stabilization at the highest resolution, but there is decent stabilization when recording at 1080p up to 60fps. But then again, you're still faced with the same white balance issue. In the camera app, Xiaomi has this movie frame mode that adds black bars on the top and bottom videos. It's an easy way to get cinematic looking shots, but it's surprising to see that it works well particularly when taking portrait shots. 
Also, slow-mo is quite good as you can go up to 240fps at 1080p. While you can push it up up to 960fps at 720p, you can definitely see the software doing its tricks. Moving to the 16MP selfie camera, it's good for photos but not for videos. I can easily get pleasant looking shots of my quarantine face even with the beauty filter turned off. It's even surprising to see how good it isolates the subject in the background when using portrait mode. Video-wise, you can get up to 1080p f30 but the quality is very noisy even when recording outdoors. Within the camera app, you have tons of modes to play with. Xiaomi even has this short video mode that, from what I understand, shoots 15 second creative videos for easy uploading to social media. However, macro mode is the one I enjoyed using the most due to the sharp photos it provides. Night mode, on the other hand, needs a ton of work. It tries to lift the shadows a lot to increase exposure and it doesn't really do anything but to make the photos look washed out and very soft. But as a whole, the Redmi Note 9 has is a decent camera phone. It only needs a few tweaks here and there, but I think it's more than enough for what you need it for at its price range. Now what about the performance? For starters, this phone is using Snapdragon 720G and is paired with 4GB RAM and 64GB storage. A higher model is available with 6GB RAM and twice the amount of storage. If you're thinking that this would be an upgrade from the Redmi Note 8 Pro, well, it's not. If you're coming from the Redmi Note 8, then it's a significant upgrade. I think the Snapdragon 720G strikes the balance between the efficiency of Snapdragon 665 and the graphics prowess of Helio G90T. And based on my experience, it's enough for heavy gaming. I've tried Battle Royale games on this one as well as MMORPGs such as Dragon Braha and Evil Lance. This phone held its own. You won't get stable 60 frames on some of the latest games, but it's playable to say the least. Really, the only problem that I notice is the consistent crashing of Ark Survival. It runs fine but it crashes in certain parts of the game. I tried it on my Galaxy Note 9 which is still plenty powerful in 2020, but the game was too choppy to play with. Initially, my thought was maybe 4GB isn't enough for modern games, but after testing it from a more powerful device, the game may not be well optimized. Other than gaming, the day-to-day -day experience on the Redmi Note 9S is almost as good as other mid-range phones. There are two things that I didn't really like. The ads and inconsistent animation. To be fair, it's just better ads, but still, one can easily accidentally tap on those ads. As for the inconsistent UI animations, it's a nitpick at this point, but I really wish Xiaomi polished their software more. At times, the home screen would just take its time to reload. It's probably just me, but I felt it broke the fluid experience. But then again, there's only 4GB RAM to work with. In 2020, 6GB should be the minimum standard. The only feature that felt really lackluster is the South Fire speaker. Both the bass and maximum output could be better, but you do have an option to use the headphone jack. When it comes to the 5020mAh battery, I consistently recorded 7 hours of screen time which includes at least 2 hours of gaming. And given we're always stuck at home, we can help but use our devices. I tried to extend my screen time by not playing games but for some reason, I always end up with the same number. Regardless, if it were still in normal times, I think the Redmi Note 9S could easily last up to 2 days. At 18 watts, you only need an hour and 45 minutes to go from zero to full. Xiaomi, however, did include a 22.5 watt adapter, but then again, the phone is limited to 18 watts. As mentioned earlier, Redmi Note 9S is available for 10,490 pesos for the 4GB, 64GB, with the 6GB and 128GB for 11,990 pesos. Its competitor is the Realme 6, which boasts 90Hz screen and 64MP cameras. Given Realme is already offering trendy features, one can easily overlook Xiaomi's offering. But from what I've noticed, it's a reliable and long-lasting phone. Redmi Note 9 ticks all of the boxes and is an easy purchase for those wanting to do more. And if you're looking to game with this phone, just make sure to purchase the top model. We hope you enjoyed this review and consider subscribing to see more videos like this. As always, my boy Manila.